crazy notion I was hoping for a world full of inclusion. Let's uphold the Constitution, bring it into all the confusion. And mother love is the only solution. We need more Lennons, Lincolns, more Kennedys and Kings. Lord, could you send somebody to help us? Someone to help us with the dream. We need another Marley, a Gandhi. A preacher, a teacher, so I'm asking you today, because the world we really need ya. I wanna live, I wanna live. Serene Orchard Park, Lackawanna, Tiktawaga, Amherst, Buffalo, we are the legendary Mix 1080, WUFO, and Power 96.5. We talk about your health, staying healthy, your wealth and your golden years, and so much more. And now, a senior moment with your host, Carrie Saunders. And good morning, older Americans and baby boomers. This is Carrie Saunders, the host of a senior moment radio show. Uh, you can listen here every Saturday morning at uh, 11 o'clock, right on time, 11 a.m., WFO Radio 96.5. And 1080 AM. We got two stations you can listen to us at. I'm thinking about going on Facebook next week. Our Facebook Live. I don't know. Yeah, maybe we'll try. You know what? We should because um, you know you get a chance to get a to see the or see me live talking about good stuff that's happening in our community, and that's what we do here. Um, you know, we can trust United Healthcare. United Healthcare is one of the Medi- Medicare insurance programs that we offer. Um, that offer all types of incentives with no copay. So United Healthcare, they they uh, actually uh, support this show, support WAFO, and support our community. So United Healthcare, uh, the Medicare program is very very good. So if you decide you want to change your healthcare, healthcare, try try United Healthcare. All right, just uh, um, call one of the representatives or see one of the representatives and do it and change your health insurance if you want. Um, COVID nineteen is still out here and. It's, it's not getting any better. Um, this new uh, Omicron, this new uh, variant is really sneaky. Um, it's hurting people, even though they say it's not that uh, contagious, or it doesn't hurt you as much, they say. Um, uh, but it's contagious, but it doesn't, you know, it dip, it's a different kind of uh, illness. It's the, the lighter illness, but that's not true because people are still dying, so... Um, get your vaccination, get your booster shot, I got mine, and wear your mask when you're out in public. You do that, make sure you do that. Um, it was cold out today. <laughs> it is cold. It's cold, 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 cold. Um, you know, so if you're going to go outside, make sure you dress warm, wear your mask. If you're going to be outside, you know, just hang out and it's cold. Just be careful. And there's a lot of ice out there, too, so be careful. And we don't want anybody to fall. I think it's like seven to eight degrees out there. I'm not sure. <laughs> It's cold. It's Buffalo, and it's, fe- and it's almost February, so what do we expect? Uh, we hope the groundhog, they say the groundhog's going to see a shadow. Then, uh, uh, uh. Lee, is if, if he sees his shadow, does he does he leave? Or if he sees his shadow, uh, you don't know? Ha, <laughs> little groundhog. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, today, we're not going to have Patty Green on uh, to do our recipes because she is uh, unavailable, but we'll have her back next week to do recipes, Patty Green. But today, we have a great show because we're going to dip into something that uh, uh, is important to our community and important to us and our family and our transition in life, you know. Um, it's something that we, should, we shouldn't be afraid to talk about. Um, we, we, we're, we're talking about hospice and palliative care, uh, Buffalo, hospice and uh, palliative care. Today we're going to be talking about hospice and palliative care, what that means and why shouldn't we be afraid to use hospice Buffalo uh, services when one of our loved ones or ourselves or ourself or one of our loved ones is about is going to transition and is facing death you know we uh, that's something we shouldn't be uh, afraid of and so we're going to get right into it we got a couple people from hospice calling in um and we're just waiting for them to call in right now uh, we have the medical director uh, dr deb and uh the clinical educational uh patient adv- advocacy person um Kelly Clem. So we're waiting for them to call, and they're going to be calling in just a couple seconds. But this hospice thing, um, you know, we hear about it, and we say, well, you know, the minute we hear about hospice, and that's just—I'm not saying everybody's like that. I'm just saying, 
you know, a lot of people say, you know, hospice, that means death. Palliative care, that means, you know, you're dying. Um, and so well, we're going to just go right into it in a minute. I think they're coming, they're calling it now, so we're going to try to get right to it and talk all about um, hospice and palliative care. And I think so, that's one on the phone right now. Hello, good, after, good, after, good morning. Hello, this is Dr. Lutskevich from Hospice and Palliative Care. Dr. Lutskevich, how Buffalo. you doing? How you doing? Good morning. We were just talking good. about, we were just talking about, uh, you, you guys are calling in and, um, uh, um, and we're going to talk about, uh, to our, our listeners this morning, about hospice and palliative care and, um, you know, you shouldn't be afraid of it and, um, and, and it's something part of our, uh, our lives and to transition to death and the way hospice does it and takes care of us. So we, we're going to talk all about that today. So I'm glad you called. So, um, you know, uh, that, that, so can I call you Dr. Deb? Because I don't want to mess your last name. Yes, yeah, <laughs> that's usually what people do. It's much easier. <laughs> so you're the medical director over at Hospice Buffalo, right? Yes, I am. And so... Um, I'm a- Go ahead. I said I'm also one of the attending physicians and the doctor for our pediatric program. Okay, so let, let our let our uh, customer uh, let our listeners just get a little bit familiar with you. I think that's I think that's your counterpart on Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. Kelly, yes. Yeah. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, hi. Well, welcome to uh, a senior moment radio show, Kelly. Thank you so much for having us. Right. So we have yes, great. So we have Doctor uh, Deb on. We have. Uh, Kelly Clem, uh, and she's the Vice President of Clinical Education and Patient Advocacy, right? Correct. Okay, Correct. at Hospice, right? And so, yeah. um, and we're, so we're going to get right into it because we're just going to ask you both a little bit about your background so our listeners understand who you are and your professionalism as far as Hospice Buffalo is concerned. Go ahead. Oh, either either sure. one. I think you, you're Dr. Deb. You were talking, right? Yes. Yeah. So my uh, my. Training was in uh, family medicine as, as well as hospice and palliative medicine. And I've been with Hospice and Palliative Care Buffalo for about 12 and a half years in a variety of roles. Um, I've also been here in the Buffalo area for over 40 years, although I wasn't born here. I'm very proud to be a member of this community. Okay. And uh, Kelly? Yes. Um, I have been uh, born and raised here in Buffalo. Okay. Um, I became a nurse in 1985, and I primarily worked in critical care areas like the emergency room um, and this uh, coronary care unit and intensive care unit. And about 25 years ago, greater than 25 years ago, I decided to come and work for um, Hospice Buffalo. And I've served, again, in a variety of, of ways there, but my current role is um, patient advocate and the clinical educator. Yeah, you know, and I'm glad we have both of you on the line on in our show this morning because um, transition is just a natural part of death. I mean, a transition is death. I mean, everybody's going to transition. And we should not be, and we should open the door to things like hospice, because hospice, if you're going to, it makes you transition a little, uh, your transition, you and your family transition into, it makes it a little bit more, I, is, I, should I say easy? Is that a bad word or is that a bad or Kelly taught me, tell me something. Is that a bad word or? I mean, yeah, it, you know, it, it, it certainly isn't easy to lose a loved one, right. but it certainly can be traumatic if it's not done in the right way. And that's what hospice and does. And I love, I love the fact that you use the word transition because it, it really softens that, that finality of, of what's happening. Um, it really is just the next step in, in life. Um, and and it, it, that transition can go um, very well and can be very peaceful, and some would even define it as beautiful. Um, but it also has a tendency, if it's not um, monitored and sort of, you know, managed in the right way, um, to be very traumatic not only for the patient but for the family members and loved ones as well. And, you know, at, at first I was hesitant um, about talking about hospice and, uh, and palliative care on, on, on the radio. And I guess a lot of people might be because they think the audience is going to get turned off. But during this pandemic, we have seen in a lot of it. And we have been part of it. And everybody who's listening, we've all probably felt somebody in our family or someone we know who has passed because of this pandemic, because of COVID, 
or some other illness due to COVID. So it is very, very, is a part of our fabric right now. And I, this is why I'm thinking that we need to get into things like hospice and palliative care to understand um, there is a way to transition properly and, 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 and it can be very, very helpful to us and our family. So that's why we're doing this today. And I want our listeners to understand that it's, don't be afraid. Uh, and I'm not saying this happening to you, but I'm saying be prepared. Of it. And, and, and we have places like Hospice Buffalo who can help us um, transition. So, Kelly, real quick, talk about Hospice Buffalo and, and palliative care so we can understand what it is, what, where it's at. And what yeah. Sure. So our organization has been here since the 70s. We started out as a volunteer movement, um, and we transitioned once in once uh, Medicare recognized this as a viable healthcare continuum. Uh, and so we have we have been firmly rooted in this community for for many years. We serve a population of people throughout Erie County, and sometimes we are allowed to extend beyond Erie County. But we take care of the seriously ill and those who are um, closer to their um, actual dying process. We, we use the term terminally ill or end of life. So we cover a, a large um, population of people from the time that they're diagnosed all the way through to the end of their life. So, okay, now Dr. Deb, and so let us know, you know, we hear hospice, we hear palliative care. What's the difference, Dr. Deb? What's the difference between the two? Yeah. That's a good question because there's often um, some confusion even among the medical professionals as to what those two terms mean. Um, the best way I can explain it is that palliative care is a medical specialty that, that works with uh, symptom management, focuses on quality of life, and support for people and their families who have a serious illness. And that could be a terminal illness, that could be a temporary illness. It could be a chronic illness that they're going to live with for many years. But if they're having some type of concern or problem that's affecting their quality of life, then palliative care um, is the medical specialty that knows how to help with that. So that's a, a much broader scope than when we talk about hospice. Because hospice, although it is also palliative care, that symptom management and support, it's for a particular group of people, and that's those people who have a prognosis that's expected to be in the range of six months or less. So hospice is more of the end-of-life care, those last months of life, whereas palliative care can be at any time during any illness. So this is something important that you're saying, because I think that a lot of uh, people get mixed up with it because they figure, well, you know, palliative care is... The, begin, the ending, the beginning of the ending of life. But what you're saying that palliative care, you can still go to Buffalo Hospice and get palliative care and still survive. You still can, you know, it's not necessarily mm -hmm. death, right? It's, it's palliative care is just managing your illness on a different level. Is that what you're saying? It's not. You don't have to be. You don't have to say, "Well, I'm going palliative care. I'm going to die." That's what pe a lot of people probably got that that, that impression. Yeah. So is that, yeah, is that, that's, a, that's a very good way to explain it. Um, and there are a lot of doctors who also um, have that misconception that palliative care means somebody is dying, and that's not true at all. So you can go, you can go have palliative care for cancer, and then maybe you, you'll survive, right? Yes. And you can have palliative care for heart problems or for lung problems. <laughs> or for um, during the time that you're having heart surgery to replace a valve and then you're, you're feeling much better afterwards. It, it doesn't mean that you're going to be dying anytime soon. So what, you know, I'm gonna, you know we, we understand hospice. When you say hospice, they say it's, it's transition. Um, they're trying to ease, and it's, they're trying to ease your way through so you can be less pain and you work with the family and all that. But palliative care is, so you can go to the hosp you can go to Buffalo Hospice Palliative Care. What kind of treatment is that? So our palliative care program is is a home based program. So we actually come to you okay. in, in your home, right. and when somebody enrolls in our our palliative care program, which is called the Home Connections Program, they have a nurse who then becomes involved in their care. 
Um, we have nurse practitioners and doctors who can come to the home to see you, can make recommendations, and they work very closely with all the other doctors that someone is seeing. So in some cases, they may be the person who's managing their pain or nausea or some other symptoms. In other cases, they may be giving advice and recommendations to their doctors. An important part of the program also are the social workers who are there to help provide support, um, whether it's uh, FMLA or paperwork or counseling. It, it, there's a broad range of services that the social workers are also involved in. So it's not just the medical care, it's also the support. And it's not just for the person who has the illness, it's also for their family members. Okay. So, you know, this, now, Okay, what are, I, this is probably almost the same kind of question, but it's just a little different. What are the health requirements, Dr. Deb, for palliative care and, so, and, and, um, and hospice? And hospice, yes. What is the Yeah, what is, so, so let's start with hospice. Hospice is, um, from a medical viewpoint, requires someone to have that prognosis of most likely six months or less. Uh -huh. And they also need to no longer be pursuing what we would call curative or aggressive treatments. So no longer getting chemotherapy, no longer getting immunotherapy, no longer wanting to have heart surgery. So those are the medical requirements. Some right. type of terminal or life-limiting illness or combination of illnesses and no longer pursuing those aggressive measures. For palliative care, it's basically an illness that's affecting quality of life. So we don't have that um, requirement to be within that six month or less window or to no longer be pursuing other treatments. Someone in palliative care can, can pursue whatever other treatment and their prognosis doesn't have to be limited to a certain range. So, I, I, you know, we're not taking, um, we're trying to talk about palliative care today and hospice. And so I hear the beeping and it will, well, well, I don't think we're taking phone calls today because we're trying to go over this and then we'll take phone calls maybe at the end of the show so um sure. and, and uh, so that's that beeping right there that's the somebody's trying to call okay. in that's what you're hearing um okay so kelly why palliative care instead of uh, a palliative care at home or instead of a medical facility why you know why do i want to take palliative care say well come to my house instead of me going to the hospital or something else sure. to, to take it kelly so it it's a, it's a great question because, you know, everybody thinks that, you know, in order to get good medicine or good care, you have to be in a, a facility or some place where they have all the, you know, the equipment and the, and the medications. Well, if you talk to patients, um, the first thing they want to do once they, once they feel ready to go home is go home. Nobody wants to stay in those facilities. And as you alluded to earlier, especially with the, the COVID outbreak, nobody even wants to go in there because of the, the fear of, you know, all the other patients who have COVID or just contracting COVID. So the desire for anyone is to be around their own family, to be with, you know, the smells and the sounds and the food and the, the books and the television and the pets. You know, everybody feels better once they get home. You sleep better, you eat better. Right. So it just makes sense that that we would, you know, meet pa patients and families where they want to be. If you couple that with the fact that when you're discharged from a hospital or a clinic setting, there is such an overwhelming amount of information that you have to understand and know in order to keep yourself out of the hospital. Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, there's medications to learn about. There's treatments. There's ways to get in and out of bed. And all of those can be very, very overwhelming once you get home. So in order for us to make sure that you feel comfortable with all of that information, we go in and we make sure that it's understandable, that it's doable, and that we give you the right supports in order to stay home. Okay. And so during the pandemic, you've, you've probably had more people taking palliative care at home. Do you, do you offer palliative care at Buffalo Hospice? Do you, can you go there and get it? Or? So palliative care is really designed for home care. Okay. Um, hospice, we, we have an inpatient unit on our, at our facility at Como Park, mm -hmm. and that is for hospice patients only, and it is designed to treat patients whose symptoms are, need a little bit more oversight than what the family can provide. 
provide. So if we're managing someone's pain at home, but it gets it gets ahead of it, the pain gets ahead of us, um, we may be able to bring that patient in, tune up their medications, tune up their treatments a little bit, and then have them return home. So it's kind of like a, a short-term stay. It also provides respite to families who need a break. Sometimes, you know, people don't realize how um, how overwhelming it can be to, you know, to be up during the night. So sometimes families will look tired and we'll just say, why don't you take, you know, a couple of days. We'll bring your loved one out to us. We'll take care of them. And you can, you know, sort of get some good sleep or go do, you maybe take a, a short trip or go see your son's basketball game and, and, you know, not have to worry about, you know, mom or dad or your brother or your sister or your husband or wife. So it affords. Um, the families that respite opportunity as well. And you, I apologize if you're trying to call in now, um, but we're trying to just, because this is our first push with hospice, and not our first push, but our first talk about hospice and um, palliative care, and we'll be uh, having um, more conversations, then we'll open a line for people to call in, but we need to learn a little bit about this, and that's why this show is always a very informative, and we don't like to get in back and forth, but we do open the lines um, a lot of times, but I mean, so just if you if you're trying to call in, just give us a chance to just go over a little bit more stuff about this because this is very very important. This is a life changing uh, conversation we're having, um, in in and it's for our whole families. And we let people know that hospice and palliative care you can use that, uh, especially at these times in, in in our lives right now. So, um, can um, Dr. Depp can can hospice care be given at home? Or, or, or at, only at a medical facility. Now, we talk about hospice care. Can that be given at home? Yes. Okay. So, actually, most hospice care is given at home or, or wherever someone lives. Um, and sometimes the thought that hospice is a place that people go to to get this care, and that's mm -hmm. not the case at all. Right. Um, as Kelly said, our inpatient unit is really more for that symptom management um, but we come to people wherever they live, and that may be their own home or with a family member or assisted living, group homes, nursing homes. We can provide hospice care in any of those settings. So when we hear, uh, and everybody's probably, all our listeners have probably heard, it, well, you know, hospice is that, you know, well, they're having hospice come into the house. That's what you're talking about, right? You just having yes. a, a a nurse or a physician, and you come in, and, and what the happens when a hospice person comes into the home? I mean, I know you're saying that, well, you know, you're about to transition, and so, what, but what, you know, give, so people just hear about it, well, so they know what, you know, what hospice actually, what a nurse, or do you send a nurse over, or a doctor, or? So when somebody enrolls in hospice, they're assigned to an interdisciplinary, a whole team of people. Okay. And uh, Kelly um, can probably explain that in more detail. Okay, Kelly, what happens when, because um, all of our listeners have heard, you know, we're all at the age that we've heard as hospices uh, come into our house or hospices at the hospital. So what happens when right. the hospice team comes into the home real quick? Sure. So we have um, a multitude of services provided to an interdisciplinary team. So you are assigned a nurse a social worker, a spiritual counselor, home health aides. If you need physical therapy, occupational therapy, we have uh, music and massage therapy, art therapy. It's all custom made and custom designed um, to meet the needs of the patient and family. Um, and we, we do this in order to um, make sure that we're covering the body, mind, and spirit. Okay, the hope is that we have time to do this, that it's not someone who's imminently dying. Because if someone's imminently dying, we, we can take care of that patient very well. But we really don't get, the patient and family don't get the full breadth and scope of our services because the time isn't there to introduce them to all of these services. But we cover 24-7, 365. There's never a time when we are not uh, uh, available by phone, and we go out and make visits at all time of day or night. We manage your medications, any, any dressings or wound treatments that you have, all of your symptoms are managed, and we manage the emotional and spiritual needs that can be overwhelming, not just for the patient, but also for the family as well. And we, we connect with your uh, pastors and, and your spiritual counselors to make sure that we're presenting a unified front, and we 
also connect with any of the healthcare providers that you're um, already affiliated with as well. So, you know, what we should understand that the hospice, um, these are professionally trained people to make transition easier. Not just a nurse or a doctor that tells you, well, this is it, blah, blah, but actually uh, mind, body, and soul. And that's what uh, Kelly was saying. So, Dr. Deb, how can hospice uh, care ease the transition, talking about for the patient and the family? How does hospice care ease the transition? So, we work in all of those areas. Um, as a doctor, my focus is often on the symptoms someone may, may have. And sometimes as people are getting nearer to their final days, we do start to see an increase in, you know, maybe some pain, maybe some trouble breathing. And so we will work with the medications and treatments to try to keep someone comfortable enough that their transition is easier. Um, there are some misconceptions about that we do things to try to speed up that transition, and that's not true at all. Um, we are allowing death to happen at its natural pace without um, doing anything to hasten it, but we want someone to be comfortable. But as Kelly said, the transition also involves the family as well, and that's where our spiritual counselors, our social workers, and eventually our bereavement team are there to help the family with their emotional transition along with the help that we give to the patient with their physical and emotional and spiritual you know changes. you know what my my, my mother we, we had hospice uh, and um passed him over to high point to the medical facility um and you were able to pinpoint exactly the the, the time of death i mean exactly and it was like okay and and when you said 24 hours you meant 24 hours i mean you know, and that's, it's, but that gave us time to be ready for it. And you know what I mean? It wasn't sudden. We knew it was coming, and it was right on. Um, so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that was very important to our, our family. Um, so, hospice and palliative care, Kelly, are, are you, you got to be, are you going to, does insurance cover it, hospice and palliative care? Yes. Um, so for hospice, um, it is a Medicare benefit um, that is available to people with Medicare, Medicaid, and most of your private insurances like Blue Cross Blue Shield, Univera, Independent Health all have a hospice rider. And it covers the full spectrum of services that we mentioned, including medication, equipment, and all of the services. There is no charge that is handed down to the patient or family in any way, shape, or form. Palliative care is, is a little slow on the uptake. Um, it, it's a newer concept in the United States. So the palliative care physician is, is uh, we get reimbursement for that. Medicare and Medicaid, however, have not stepped in just yet to cover um, the full spectrum. But here at, in Buffalo, we have appealed to um, all of the private insurance companies, like I, like I said, Independent Health, Univera, and Blue Cross Blue Shield, and they have recognized the benefits of, of palliative care, and so we do get reimbursed for that. So that is that people who have those insurances or who have a Medicare Advantage program, they can access palliative care as well. So, um, but if, if any of your listeners um, aren't sure, um, we encourage them to call regardless because um, because we're a not-for-profit we'll figure something out. We will always work with any patient who's in need because that's our commitment and our mission is to make sure that every person in our community is served regardless of their ability to pay. So get a pen because um, those people were calling in. Get a pen real quick and um, if you want to call, uh, is it Buffalo Hospice? Um, that's what we're talking about. Kelly? Yes. All right, what is yeah, the number? Hospice. You can call. One number covers both programs. So we'll just, we'll get some information and then we'll, after we meet the patient and family, we'll be able to determine what the best um, program is for them. So what number is that? So it's just 686-8000 and that's an area, 716 area code. So 716-686-8000. 686 it costs six eight six eight thousand, and that's all you have to do. And then um, Buffalo Hospice will uh, help you, you give you more information yep. and help you transition. Doctor Deb, um, do patients have to have a doctor's pro prognosis before uh, they can receive uh, hospice care or 
palliative care? Hmm. Yeah, for, for palliative care, no. There's no specific prognosis that's required. Um, but for hospice, there is. Um, and it's generally that six months or less prognosis. And if someone is interested in hospice, they can call us directly that you don't have to wait for the doctor to reach out. But if no. someone is considering hospice, we will contact their doctor for them and get their uh, information and their estimate of prognosis. Um, and that six month or less isn't exact. You know, we, we know that prognosis is an estimate. It's sometimes a best guess. So it, it's not necessarily an absolute requirement that we have to be 100% sure that someone is going to pass within six months. But that's part of our evaluation process as well, to speak to someone's doctor, to review their medical record, and um, come up with our best estimate of that prognosis. So um, what about palliative care? Palliative care does not require a particular prognosis. It, um, it, it's basically for someone with a chronic or serious illness that's affecting uh, their life. And it doesn't have to be something that's going to lead to death in any particular time frame, it's, it's simply the fact that someone has the illness. So there is no um, prognosis requirement for the palliative care. All right, so I had somebody text me, so uh, I'm going to always ask this question. I guess they're trying to get in and uh, talk about the patient's <laughs> education. And uh, for the, well, I was going to ask that question anyway. So um, it, it, is, uh, is, you know, after the grief, I know grief is normal, um, but after uh, the transition and hospice has is, is, is um, been into the house and stuff, do you have any programs for the family um, after the transition? Yes, um, and I would, I would venture to say that that's probably some of our best work. Um, okay. We are actually required by Medicare uh, to provide 13 months of brief support to um, family members and loved ones who have been identified as, it, um, as being in need of that care. Mm -hmm. And the families can choose, or the loved ones can choose to do this um, either one-on-one -on -one with a counselor, you can do group counseling, or you can do family counseling. And it really is customized to the, to the family's needs, and we can serve more than one person. And this is a way to sort of not only sort of process what has happened, what the loss means, but also in a very, very um, sort of step-by-step -step process, um, it, it teaches people how to start living their new life without that loved one, recognizing that they will never forget, they will never feel the same, but also acknowledging that life does go on for the survivors and that there's a way to do it where you can memorialize and still validate the life of the person that has, that has passed or transitioned, but at the same time still feel joy um, in the life that you have left to live. So it's really a profound program, and, and as I said, we get 13 months of care that we're able to provide, and that comes with no charge to any patient's family member as well. Well, wow, so you, you you actually, after the patient the transition, you actually stay with the family and, and, and walk through them through the grief period, too. Exactly. That is exactly. really good. That's really good. So yep. this is uh, Buffalo uh, Hospice and Palliative Care, and we're, we're talking about this today, and we want to have them back on this show more often. Because um, we want, and we'll, we'll talk about different things, what's going on with Buffalo Hospice. So one last, you have anything to say, Kelly, Dr. Deb, to our, our listeners and give us some information about how to contact you again? Go ahead, because we got where we're Sure. Where so this is Kelly. We just want to encourage you. I know it's a frightening call. It's one of the most difficult calls that you can make. But most people will find themselves saying, I wish I would have called sooner. That's probably one of the most common things that we hear because once people realize that, you know, we're not here to hasten death, we're not here to move you into that dying process, we're here to support you um, in every way, body, mind, and spirit. Um, and if you just make that first call, I think you'll realize how helpful we can be to the community. And that number is 716. 686 8000. Dr. Deb, real quick, I got 30 seconds. Sure. So, the other thing to keep in mind is that you don't have to wait for your doctor to, to bring up palliative care or hospice. You can initiate that contact yourself, or your family member can do it on your behalf. Um, and we will work with you and see what 
what the situation is and talk to you and help you decide what might be best. I also want to add that in addition to our um, phone number, we have a website. It's hospicebuffalo.com. There is also a way to contact us through email on the website, and there's also a lot of information there if somebody has questions or wants to read more about what we do and what's available. And that was hospicebuffalo.com. All right. We had a little bit of extra time this morning, so thank you so much. God bless both of you for all the work you do. Um, and our listeners, you know, this, this is what we got to do. I mean, this is our, our this is the life we're in right now. Um, so let's, if you need somebody that, if you need hospice or palliative care, you think you know someone that needs, don't be afraid to step out to it because this is what's happening in our life right now. But anyway, have a great day today. Thank you, Doctor, and thank you, uh, Kelly, Doctor Deb and Kelly. Thank, thank you. you so much, and we'll hope to have thank you on you our so show much. again from Buffalo Hospice. Thank you. Um, hey, this is Saturday, so have a good day out there. WFO Radio 96.5. We love you. Have a good day. We'll see you next week here on the Talk of the Town with, with Carrie Saunders. <laughs> no, not Talk of the Town. It's <laughs>